Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to see you. I'm Suzanne Zippo. Please do me a favor, hit subscribe. So about this painting, it is a 10 by 10, so it's a little bit larger than the 6 by 6s that I've done earlier for video. They are much slower to make than the 6 by 6 So it will be sped up. I did the background and I sped that up all the way through the flower. I also changed the color of the flower from my original uh, Pixabay photo, my um, download that I used. And uh, by the way, Pixabay is a fantastic service. If you haven't used it, go there, pixabay.com. It is um, free to use. Uh, do them a favor and, and give them a shout out if you can. But um, it's artists who are sharing their gifts with others. Uh, I am having a list of the materials that I used at the very end and also a list of the brushes and so forth. I like pictures and you can download those. So uh, click on the link below. Let's see. So this is the point where I am going in and starting to paint the bee. I have definitely been stalling around uh, because that was the hardest part in my opinion. So here we go. And I'm painting. I make sure to make it a very fussy little bee. There's the head from him. And the way I do that is by going in and pulling up or out of the wet paint with a tip of the wet paintbrush and I balance my hand so I don't touch wet paint and also for stability I balance my hand with my pinky. That was a very very useful technique that I learned way back when when I was doing porcelain painting back in Denmark and there was such a sweet lady who was doing an evening course, an evening class and that was one of the tricks that she shared. It's really good because it's very hard to sit there and, and be accurate and make things very detailed if you don't have some sort of balance. So lots of little fuzzies and I will be speeding up the video um, as well for the bee just a little bit and you'll see. Uh, I am blocking in first of all his head and the head and then the legs and um, and then the body. Yeah, and then there's the whole thing of, well, is this a, a him bee or a her bee? Well, it can't be a queen because it's not big enough. And I'm not even sure that, yeah, now I have to think on my biology lessons. I believe it's a worker bee and they're generally sexless, so it's an it. Yeah, yeah, I believe that's, that's correct. <laughs> Anyway, I'm blocking in um, where his, his legs are. It, yeah, see, there you go, again. Where its legs are following what I see on, on the reference photo. And, oh, I am going to be giving you a traceable as well. You can also click on a link for that. So here I'm starting to block in the body. And... Like I said before, since there's so much fuss around, and that, that is basically the, the yellow areas, I'm going to be blocking in and using a darker tonality right there for his body. And oh, that's a, a raw umber that I'm using. The same that was used for a lot of the background in the darker tones. I use golden paints a lot. I like them. They're really awesome, good quality, very high pigmentation. Uh, pigmentation basically means that there are a lot more color particles in there. Um, some of the cheaper, I'm sorry, some of the more affordable brands, because gold is a little expensive. Uh, some of the more affordable brands have a lot of filler and they basically will not... Um, blend as easily either because of all the pigmentation um, additives or whatever the additives are. I'm not really sure I don't make paints, but I have noticed that oh, it's such a beautiful clean color that I get 
when I'm using the, the golden paints. So big shout out to them. Really highly recommend them. Here I'm blending in a little more red. Um, and by the way, that red is a Utrecht red. Um, yeah, I, you can interchange every now and then. That's okay. The, uh, the paints themselves are either the medium body or the golden fluids. And for most of the details, I'm using a small round tip brush. So here I'm adding more yellow because the back of his body, mm, the word for that, I'm not sure right now. The back of his body is more yellow and I'm also creating the general shape of him being somewhat round. I'm changing the general direction of him compared to my tree, my um, inspiration photo there. Uh, it just seems easier, looks better basically on uh, a square canvas than that a little more diagonal. So just explaining my, my processes here. I'm pretty sure that nobody who's following this is afraid of bees. Well, Maybe, maybe you are, maybe it's something that you want to do as a meditation to get to learn the bees better. And if that's the case, then I really respect that. That is wonderful. I have learned that bees react very well to an alpha state of brain waves, which sounds really strange. Um, but I learned to meditate very young. And there is a certain calm state of mind that I can put myself in and just send out calm vibrations. And I think we can all do it, especially if we're not agitated and scared because, oh my God, the bee is going to bite us or sting us. Um, so what I have taught my children and tell everybody that care to listen when there's a bee around is to just stand still, just be calm. Don't flail, don't thrash about, just be very, very easy and calm. And the bee will sense it and realize, oh, you're not a threat. You are not dangerous to me. Therefore, I can let you be. Um, oh, that was a good pun. <laughs> Unintended. So those, those are little tidbits of um, beekeeping knowledge or bee, bee knowledge that I've found. They really don't attack they just protect themselves and their protection is super dangerous to them they die bees die they lose their sting on they die wasps are a little different they are they are also a little more aggressive but bees have a very calm way about them and i have also found that with wasps if you stay calm it's the same thing they won't bite they won't sting you so anyway here's more of the, the fussiness, you'd be pulling in more more of the yellow, and uh, again, just using the fine tip brush, pulling out, 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 making those tiny brush strokes with the fine tip of the brush. Oh, I got a little more smear there, so now I'm moving over and filling in with some white strokes. And the white strokes are kind of highlights. Now, bees don't have highlights, but in order for me to actually make it look right, I need white under color, under painting for the yellow. Yellow is a very translucent color and it won't show up in a dark background. So if you put titanium white down first, you can color in with yellow afterwards. And um, that works so much better. Anyway, I would really love to hear from you what your experiences with bees are and why you decided to follow and paint this bee. Because I think we all have some very interesting stories to share with each other and, and talk about. And I'd like to hear yours. <laughs> so here I added a little more red to the, the golden of the 
think it's called a thorax, but I might be wrong. Anyway, the back of his body, um, because he looks very reddish when you look at that reference photo. The colors are, the tonalities are red, and you can see a little more what I'm talking about of the white added in there. Sooner or later, pretty soon actually from here, I need to let it rest. Um, this painting ended taking me more than three hours to finish. <laughs> I don't want to put anybody through sitting there and, and watching paint dry for three hours. Haha. <laughs> um, so now I let it dry and it's time to come back and work on it just a little more. So a little more fussiness here. sitting here and thinking a little bit. Ah, there we go. Now I start adding the highlights for the making the yellow stripes. So putting in some lighter color so that it can show up more with the yellow on top. Yeah, there we go. Kind of getting the shape there. And we'll get to the darker stripes pretty soon. Filling in that area right there. Okay, this is where I came back after it had dried. I can almost see the color being different. Strange how the camera picks up different things. Oh, I think I know why. It's because I actually moved down my painting. So you see a little less of the bottom there. And just that little bit will change how the camera is picking up on the color. So I'm putting a little more on the flower again. Working a little more on the highlights right there. Making them look good. And some notes about how I'm painting the flower. I, um, I know this is more about the bee than the flower, but information is always good. Um, in order to cover the dark background, because you see I had it blocked in just a little bit before and then I covered it, I went in and, and did the yellow flower. Uh, to do that, I was going to say, you cover, I cover it with titanium white and I mix in titanium white uh, into the colors that I put over the dark background. Oops, sorry about that. Um, that way I can come back and I can add yellow or red or whichever translucent beautiful color that I want on there. So again, using the little strokes to make sure to elude to fuzziness on the bee. And a little more up there. Pretty soon it'll be time to put in the dark stripes and the darker stripes are made both with raw umber and then uh, going in and making it just a little bit darker with black, you see. But I start with the raw umber, reason being that if we go directly to black, there's no going back. With raw umber you can decide well, where do you want the little more subtle areas of dark and where do you want the really heavy hitting black. So it's starting to look very much like a bean now. And there comes the black. You can really tell the difference too. There was this leg on the side. I didn't get that like put in first. Go. So, little by little, going in here and adding some highlights 
adding a little bit of yellow and then we're going to be adding highlights to the back of the body to create that sheen. There we go. You can see that. A little more white, a little more there. Adding some yellow. And putting a little highlight on the leg up there as well. I sped it up a bit. Um, let's see here. We are working on the highlights in general in this little video clip. Um, in this part of it. And then slowly but surely getting into making the wing. And I freehand it. I measure the way I generally do it is just knowing the size of the body and then kind of knowing where to end it. When I, let me explain that again. When I pull out the size of the wing, I know that it doesn't go out any further than the body. And that's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Sorry about the little um, confusion there. But um, so we're doing first the dark outlines of the wings. And once we have the outline done, we're going to be filling in. Right now I am fixing the darker area that I put in. I decided that wasn't good for the composition. So, yep, titanium white to the rescue, as always. Wonderful stuff. I think I'm going to have to make a video explaining how I measure in my mind's eye, how artists do that. It's something that we've gotten so used to when you do it all the time that you don't really think about, well, yeah, that's actually a technique. Um, but I will make a video about that, I promise. And uh, for now, just kind of, if you need to, take a ruler, take a, a little line and, and make out and just say, okay, this far, don't want it to be any bigger, don't want it to be any smaller. Um, and we're going to be, um, see, I'm working on making the other wing. And I am also going to add the translucency now. And the way that we do the translucency is using quinacridone nickel azo gold. I just really love paint color names. They sound so delicious to me, but I'm sure other artists can relate to that one just because it's something we love to do and oh, the names. So I'm checking my references in my um, print, looking at it, checking, double checking, and um, it's looking pretty good actually. Keep on working on the body, adding a little more of the fuss and working on the highlights around the body as well, highlights in the flower. Yeah, I just kept on working on the background and making it a little more interesting. Um, it changed a bit, you see, of course, from the very last one. And that's something that I encourage everybody to do. Make sure that you make it your painting. Use your imagination and your feeling of what looks right, what looks good. If you want a yellow flower, then that's what I did. As you can t tell, that I started with a purple and changed it to something different. Purple, violet, color, uh, B. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You could do that too. Absolutely. Do whatever you want. It's your painting, so you get to have fun and, and just invent whatever you want it to look like. Um, that's the beauty of it all, isn't it? Um, yes, I do get carried away with the nerdness of making things look just right in some ways, but in other ways I totally freehand and make it up as I want to. And that's what we can do with paint. Anytime we sit down and do something creative, it's our work, it's our stuff, and we get to make it up as we want to go. So please, 
enjoy the freedom of the material, enjoy and share. I would really love to see what your B decided to look like at the very end. Um, there is no right or wrong at all. And that's the beauty of it. I have um, added all the different paint colors in and a photo at the very end. So you can see it there. And um, you can... Yeah, I, I'm going to figure out how to make a link as well so you can download it as a, as a document. Anyway. Um, yes. So it is pretty well done. I'm working on the background now and making it be so that the bee can stand out a little more. I'm going to pull in some of the colors from the background, a little bit of green. I'm going to add some bluish tones and tints in there as well, um, just to give it some more life. And I sped it up just a bit because the bee is pretty well done. I, um, I really enjoyed making this. It was so much fun. I hope that you had fun painting along or will have fun painting along with me and getting your supplies. I'd love to have a comment from you. Uh, leave me a message as you can and um, I just oh, I'm just so happy that that people paint anymore um, more and more and actually I think that these YouTube videos that are out there so many of us are sharing um, they really make a difference because we get to feel a little bit connected a little more together I know that I've been watching many YouTube videos myself just to get inspired and just to have them in the background and it's it's really nice it feels like you're connecting with another human being even if I've never seen them and even if I never see you I just want to let you know that um, this is wonderful and I really want you to enjoy it as much as I do um, it's a beautiful thing that we can share as humans. That's just amazing. We have so many talents and so much ability. And I really hope that this little video here helps all the videos that I'm trying to make can help somehow inspire and grow the creativity. So I took a picture of my well-used, well-loved brushes and from left to right I have the round tip brush, I have a filbert size 12, a flat brush size 1, and I have a 1 inch brush, a filbert size 10, and I used a big pencil and it's 0.7 millimeters number 2 lead. And for colors there's another picture coming up right here. In order of appearance on the photo here, I use raw umber, permanent alicylin crimson. I'm going top to bottom. Carbon black, green gold, quinacridone, nickel azo gold, yellow, Indian yellow hue, titanium white, and primary cyan. Have fun painting. Bye.